the array reduce method executes a callback function on every element of an array and it will return one single output value. Think of it like getting an array of items and then adding all of the items inside one resulting value. The best example for this will be uh, we have a numbers array with five numbers inside and we want to add these numbers up into a total variable. Let's do that and see how reduce works. So total will be numbers that reduce. Now this reduce takes in uh, two parameters, a callback function and the initial value, which we're going to start when the iteration starts. So callback and initial value. Now in our example, uh, the total should start with zero, right? And we get the callback. Let's write the callback here. Uh, let's change it to sum. Okay, so change this to sum. Now this callback receives four parameters. The accumulator, the value, the index, and the array. These three parameters are used in the other higher order functions we learned, like map, filter, sum, every, and so on and so forth. But this one is the new one. This will keep track of the value which will be returned at the end. And it will be initialized with the initial value we provide here. Now, in order to add up all the numbers, we're going to need to return the accumulator plus the value. So we're getting the value at every step and we're adding it inside the accumulator, but also inside that accumulator, we need to add the accumulator at that step. So let's remove this because we don't need it and go over step by step how this works. Initially, the accumulator will be zero and we're going to add one. This will be one and it will be stored inside the accumulator. Next, we're going to get two and we're going to return accumulator, which is now one plus two, which will be three. So this now the accumulator will become three. Next step, it will be three plus the value three, which will be six and it will be stored inside the accumulator. Next step will be four, four plus six will be 10 and it will store inside the accumulator. And next step be five plus 10 will be 15 and that's the last step. And then it will be returned and stored inside the total. And now if we console.log the total, you can see we get 15 which is nice because now if we add 6, we get 21. If we get 7, we get 28. So all the numbers will be nicely added. This is optional. If we don't provide 0 here, the initial value will be the first value from the array, and that iteration will be skipped. All right, let's see some other examples so we can understand better how the reduce works. But basically, the main idea is this. You have an array of elements, either numbers, strings, objects, arrays, whatever, and you want to compress them inside one returning value. That value can also be a number, a string, an array, or an object, whatever you want. But basically that's how the logic behind this works. Let's see another example. What if we want to get the maximum from an array? Uh, let's change this to maximum and uh, let's change this to callback so we don't need to rewrite the function name always. All right, so we get the callback and we store the maximum, which will be returned. Now, what are we going to do here? Well, keep in mind that we need an initial value. So let's do uh, minus infinity because that's the lowest point we can pick. And now, inside this function, we want to return always uh, the bigger value between the value we have from the array or the accumulator, which we're going to use to store the maximum value at the current step. All right, so if accumulator is bigger than value, then we want to return the accumulator. Otherwise, we want to return the value 
which will be stored in the accumulator which will be used in the next iteration. Alright, let's see how this works. We should get 7, because 7 is the biggest. If we put here 10, we should get 10, which is awesome. So again, we get the accumulator which initially is minus infinity, so we're picking a low, low number, the lowest number, and then we're checking. If this is bigger than the current value, which is 10 in this example, then we return the accumulator. But in our case this is minus infinity, so we're going to return the value. Now this value will be stored inside the accumulator, which will be used in the next iteration, and so on and so forth. Make sense? I hope so. Let's uh, use it in another example. I'm going to paste in an array of objects, and then we're going to write a reduce function for that array. Alright, so now we have a little store, which has a three kind of products, laptops, desktops, and mobiles. We have the value for each laptop, which is 1000, and we have the amount of laptops we have. Same for all the products. Now, what we want to do is to find out what's the worth of all the products we have in our store. And the reduce method is perfect for that. So let's write the function to get the total value uh, store, total value from store. So store dot reduce, and here we need to pass in the callback function. Uh, let's do it in line with an arrow function. So we get the accumulator, and we get the value or the item in this case. All right, and now we want to start with zero. That's the the initial total we have, and here we want to return. Keep in mind that the arrow function here returns the value of accumulator plus the item dot value times item dot count. All right, and let's put this in parentheses. Okay, so every time we're going to multiply the value of the item with the count of the item, and then we're adding it inside the accumulator and returning it. And now console.log, the total value store should be 14,000. You can do the math, but that's the right number, I promise. Okay, so that's another example of how the reduce method works. Keep in mind again that it will take an array and it can compress it to one single value. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.